And we start WUSA 9 News at 5 with the latest on the Baltimore Key Bridge collapse. Thank you for being here with us. I'm Lorenzo Hall. I'm Leslie Foster and a short time ago, President Biden joined state and local leaders for a tour of the collapse site. Yeah, the president says he is heartbroken over the lives lost and promised to do whatever it takes to get a new bridge built. The damage is devastating and our hearts are still breaking. Eight, eight construction workers went to the water when the bridge fell. Six lost their lives. Most are immigrants, but all were Marylanders. Hardworking, strong, and selfless. My vow is that we will not rest, as Carlos said, until the cement has dried and the entirety of a new bridge. A new bridge. Yeah, earlier this afternoon, you can see the president got an aerial tour of the collapsed site. He also got a briefing on the salvage and recovery efforts that continue at this hour. The president's visit comes as we are getting a clearer picture of when they might be able to get ships moving back into the port of Baltimore. Yeah, the Army Corps of Engineers is aiming for a partial reopening of the channel by the end of the month, and it estimates the entire channel could be open by the end of May. The woman in charge of that effort is U.S. Army Colonel SDS Pinchazin, and she is or she's live with our Scott Broom to lay out what's ahead. Yeah, it's an ambitious timeline. It was just announced last night. They've committed to trying to get a partial reopening uh, by the end of the month, a 35 foot channel. And you just mentioned uh, this is the person in charge, Colonel SDS Pinchason, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, through every briefing, no sleep, putting this plan together. And uh, I know the president was heartened to be able to talk about a timeline for a partial reopening and a full reopening by the end of May. What's next in just the next few days to try to make that happen? So I just want to clarify, we are here at the Unified Command Center and we have a very great team. We are getting sleep. We can't do something like that without properly okay. resting our folks. Okay. Just want to reassure I'll everybody. <laughs> so no, it's, it, it is, it's a very realistic timeline. We are looking at this holistically. We have all three salvage efforts coming together, being coordinated by the Navy's salvage masters, experts in salvage operations, and making sure that all the equipment that we have is maximized so that we are most efficient in our plans and making sure that we can leverage what we need when we need for the priorities. Well, I noted that there are seven cranes on site now and they're prepared to begin moving debris. Already some debris has been uh, removed, but we're really uh, talking about one side of the channel where there's debris that's not tangled up with the ship right now, and that's so where we get wreckage, that. wreckage, right? Yeah. So, right. So I think when you look, when we look at the far side of the channel, the vessel is right up against the channel. It's not necessarily interfering so much with the channel. On the far side of the channel, though, we're, we still have that massive truss that we're going to be have to, that we'll have to cut and remove section by section. And then, but underneath the surface of the water and into the mud line, we do have a tremendous amount of mangled and cantilever debris that's going to need to be lifted and then probably using a uh, salvage bucket removed. All right, Colonel Pinchason, thank you for spending just a, a moment with us. It goes without saying, when Colonel Pinchason was talking about buckets to bring uh, debris up, they're still uh, looking for the, the four missing victims in all of this, and each and every debris lift that happens uh, is going to be done with that in mind, uh, and they are prepared for the eventuality that they're going to recover uh, the missing people out there as well. Reporting live in Baltimore, Scott Broom, WUSA 9, back to you. It is an arduous task, but we are thankful for them. Everyone, though. All right, thank you, Scott. You can count on WUSA 9 to be on top of every development in the Baltimore Key Bridge collapse. And right now, you can use your phone's camera to scan the QR code on your screen. We'll send you a link to all of the reporting we've done so far.